And to kick off this new year with our first official event, A New Year, A Better You, presented by Rachel Tanzi of the Rutgers Cooperative Group. Rachel is a Senior Extension Associate for the Family and Community Health Sciences Department under the Rutgers Cooperative Extension in Monmouth County. Rachel earned her bachelor's degree in nutritional sciences from Rutgers University and her master's in holistic health from Georgian Court University. She works with local partners to educate residents on various topics centered around nutrition, wellness, and health, healthy well being. Her primary concentration areas are in community health education, wellness and self care, nutritious eating, and healthy lifestyles with an emphasis on wellness in the workplace. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Rachel for today's presentation. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. And I appreciate you joining and, uh, you know, getting back in with the link. I'm not sure what happened there. So I just want to just start with a happy new year. Um, it's it's still happy new year, right? Still January. That works. So uh, today we're going to discuss a little bit about how we are already doing great things. First of all, you're already attending this. So you want to do some wonderful things for yourself and to make yourself a better you. You kind of hear the phrase a lot of the times, a new year, a new you. I kind of like it to say a better you because you're already doing such wonderful things. Let's just make it a little bit better. If you're not really familiar with our webinar logistics here just so you know you're all muted and your videos are blocked but if you have any questions you can put them in the chat box and we are recording this webinar so it can be viewed at a later time and um, you can always email me I'll give you that at the end if you have specific questions um, that you want to keep you know between the two of us we can do that or you can ask them in the chat etc. If you're not familiar with the Rutgers Cooperative Extension structure, we have three departments. We have the Agriculture Natural Resources Department, which even comprises of the Marine Sciences Department. Then we have our 4-H Youth Development Department, and then my Department of Family and Community Health Sciences, where we focus on nutrition, health, and wellness programs throughout the state, throughout the nation. There happens to be uh, quite a few partners that work with us. Of course, Rutgers the State University, the County Board of Commissioners, and the National Institute for Food and Agriculture, USDA. So with all of those collaborations, we're able to do, um, you know, kind of multifaceted programs. And you can always check us online and follow us on social media as well. Okay. So RCE, Rutgers Cooperative Extension, is an affirmative action equal opportunity employer. So I wanted to put this poster up as well for your viewing. And we can move on. So New Year's often brings on things like resolutions. A lot of people sort of talk about, oh, what are, what's their resolution going to be? What are they going to do, et cetera? Well, you know, the question is really, do you make them? Should you make them? Do you stick to the ones that you set? Do you have to make them? Not necessarily. You know, it's really just up to you, whatever works for you as a person. I sort of feel like in some ways resolutions get this connotation of like you only can start them in the new year and you're going to make it now and it's going to last however long. Whereas I sort of look at it as, like I said, a better you, a better approach to things where we just sort of want to make changes that you are doing things better than you were yesterday. So moving on, we sort of can make a resolution overall, like an umbrella resolution to resolve to your health. We're making a resolution to your health, whatever that may be. If you look at this little word bubble here, it could be your physical health. It could be your philosophy on things. It could be the way you think about certain ideals, your psychology and your mind, your mental health, your physical health, your, your social health. All of those things comprise within your health. So we really are looking to be overall kind of good, healthy habits that make us be that better person that we're trying to achieve. And you might be doing some amazing things already, but, you know, nobody's perfect. So we can all find space to make a few improvements. So maybe one of those things you'd like to do is to eat healthier. You know, we all have, let's just say you could be a, a wonderful eater and then you go to a party and you overindulge, you have too much sugar, too many bad for you kind of choices made. Um, and that's fine because we are human. And honestly, you know, one day isn't going to break, break, you know, your habits, but we have to learn how to kind of get back on the bandwagon there and figure out where we go from there. Maybe one of the things you'd like to do is exercise more. 
Maybe you are very sedentary right now and you just want to sort of get out and start walking and start moving a little bit more. Maybe you already do that and you really want to like beef up your, your workout and your exercise routine. So you have to sort of see where you're at and setting your own goals, your SMART goals, so that they're attainable, they're measurable, be specific. So SMART is specific, measurable, attainable, um, and then like you also want to make sure everything is timely as well and that they're reliable goals. So you're able to kind of look at your goal and say, all right, is this something I'm going to be able to do? Am I going to be able to work in a 10 minute walk each day? Is that attainable? Probably. If it's pouring down torrential downpours and you can't get outside to take a walk, well, maybe just walking around your house and you can make that be the attainable goal for the day. So you're needing to be flexible as well. Um, so knowing that those types of goals can even help better your mental health as well, because we all need to be forgiving of ourselves also. So if one day is going to be, you know, you just have a terrible day, whatever your thing was for the day and you just didn't attain it, you just couldn't get past something else. But knowing that you're flexible and able to handle other things um, in the meantime, and just giving yourself that flexibility and that forgiveness is what helps your mental health as well. And maybe you want to do things that even help your mental health by reading more or, you know, doing some more fun activities, et cetera. So perhaps fitting in more downtime for yourself, making sure that you you take the time that you need to have what we call self-care. And it could be reading a book. It could be maybe laughter and um, other activities such as that. So I'm just going to say, try to take a minute here. If you could put it in the chat as to what you might think of, and we're going to look over them in a minute, what you might maybe have one little thing um, of, a, of a goal you're looking to change. I'll give you a second. Okay, let's see what we have in here. I don't see anything in the chat yet. If anybody is trying to add the chat, if you're able to throw in, um, you can you can comment in the chat, everyone, if you have an attainable goal, um, you know, like I said, maybe walk more if you'd like to. Um, try to see if there's something, you know, that might be specific to you. Eating healthy, great. Um, just want to walk more and drink more water. That's actually, we're going to talk about that in a moment. And that's a great one too. Exercise and eating cleaner. I like that. Um, getting 10,000 steps. I love it daily. Great. So again, you know, there's going to be days, let's just kind of touch on that, the 10,000 steps. There are going to be days you're going to, you know, surpass your 10,000 steps because you're just going to be out doing your thing. But then there will be days where maybe you don't really reach it. So we want to make sure that you're flexible and your understanding of yourself that eating healthy and daily exercise, whatever that might be. So eating healthy um, in the sense of, you know, adding more fruits and vegetables, maybe eating healthy, decreasing sugar, things like that. Love this one. Work, better work life balance. I mean, don't we all need that? That's a great one. We have to sort of set goals. And what I've tried to say um, to everyone is make sure as you are doing your goals, you know, we have no problem. I mean, right. I use my little calendars. I have a handwritten calendar. I have the phone calendar. I have the computer calendar, all those things. We have no problem setting our meetings and setting our appointments and things like that. But what is also important is setting your own personal goals. Maybe one day you need to set aside time for yourself. Maybe you need a half an hour a day to set aside time for yourself, whatever it is, making sure that you prioritize your own health. So it's kind of like the the ruling with um, the airplane, you know, put on your mask before you help others. Same thing here, same concept, kind of helping yourself first before you can really help others. So I see a lot of other great ones here. So I really applaud you and appreciate you, you joining in on that little conversation. So I just want you to remember to keep it simple, keeping it manageable, and as I've said, keeping it attainable. 
But we want to jumpstart our health, okay? So, you know, no time like the present. It's the beginning of the year, but if I was giving you this lecture in June, I would say the same thing, no time like the present. So you don't really need it to be the new year to start a new goal and start something new for yourself. But when we make those changes, we'd like to make them lasting changes. And by doing so, think about baby steps, little small steps, little things that you do and change that can help you keep those um, again, we're going to call them resolutions, but keep those goals and keep those things in check so that you can and you know that you're today wasn't a great day. That's OK. Tomorrow's a new day. We're going to start new tomorrow. Um, setting those reasonable goals, creating a plan and sticking to it. Like I said, if you can keep it in your um, you know, in your calendar or wherever you keep all your little notes, maybe put little, I have like around my computer, a bunch of little stickies for things that I have to do. Um, so whatever it is for you. And I, I know it's, there's a great, um, mentality between making like checklists and at the end of each day, maybe being able to check off the things you were able to do. So even if it's a repetitive checklist every day that you want to make sure you eat healthy, you, you ate some extra fruits and vegetables, you got out and walked or something like that. That and you check them off every day, that helps set a good mental health strategy as well. So just remember, we're not really looking to overhaul our complete lifestyle to make big impacts, but those small little steps can lead to big impact. So by evaluating what it is that you want to change, kind of think about it, what you could change, what you can better, because maybe, like I said, you're already doing some great things. So what you're doing already just needs to be fine-tuned, refined. Um, those are some things that actually can help you to be successful. And even if your overall goal is quite lofty, maybe, you know, you want to, you know, be a bodybuilder, maybe you want to lose 50 pounds, whatever it might be, just starting in a small direction and just getting those baby steps are what's going to keep you and motivated, having a strong support system, having those things that give you the gratitude for doing so each day. So being grateful for the things that you're able to do each day is also very important for our mental health as well. So even if you had a little setback, that's okay. Just push through it. And then you're able to, um, you know, be grateful for the things you were able to do that day. The power of positivity, you know, we've all heard this the power of positive thinking, right? So one of the things that I just wanted to make note of is that following a healthy lifestyle of eating healthy foods and getting some physical activity each day along with adequate sleep. So eating healthy and getting physical activity will actually help you sleep better at night as well. Generally speaking, those that sleep seven and a half to nine hours of sleep each night tend to be happier people. There's been some studies on that. So if you're able to be one of those happier people, and they tend to live longer too, uh, roughly eight years longer, if you get a, a, anywhere from seven to nine hours of sleep. And again, it could be cumulative. I mean, I wake up almost every night to run to the bathroom. So, but you know, it could be a cumulative effect. It could be, you know, it's four o'clock in the afternoon and I need to take a little nap and, you know, you're able to do so, like, you know, not on work time, but, you know, um, able to take a nap that adds up as well. So being happier can lead to a happier, longer life as well. And then, of course, healthier also, because, you know, we always hear it's good for your health to be restful, not oversleeping and not having too many hours of sleep, but being rested and being of the right mind to be able to focus and do your work that's, you know, able to kind of keep the concentration going as well. So along the lines of positivity, surrounding yourself with positive people, like-minded, optimistic people tend to influence others. They tend to be encouraging. They tend to keep a sense of calm. They tend to exude that positive energy. You know, we've all been around those negative people, right? And you feel it. You kind of like, oh, like I need to kind of shy away from that person because you feel the negativity. Same goes for positivity. And you, you tend to be like, oh, I just had a great conversation. I just had a wonderful day with so-and-so. And you don't really realize that it might be because that person is a positive person, positive influence on you. You may be positively impacted them. And it's a great symbiotic relationship. So those things are really important for us mentally and physically as well. Focusing on those good things, even the smallest successes in life, you know, smile at something happened today, something funny something that made you smile, something that just gave you that little sense of like warmth in your heart. 
whatever it was. Each night I would, I would like ask for you to essentially um, find something that um, gives you that sense of gratitude, gives you that sense of happiness. Trying to stay complete on a task, something you've worked on for so long, you're able to complete it. You're able to get to the next step, whatever it might be. That also is a great sense of gratitude. And then, you know, maybe it wasn't anything great, but you just got to work on time. That's wonderful. Be positive about that. So how to get started, just generally speaking, in the mornings, it's always easiest to start your day on a positive note, because I always say, you know, I hear some of the alarms that go off and they're like that loud, like rah, 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 noise. And it, like, to me, that makes me angry. So I don't want to start my day like that. I start with a nice, lighthearted sort of musical note that goes on in my on my alarm. But if you can't wake up to that, I can appreciate that you need to get the other loud one. But one of the other things you can do for yourself, however you do wake up in the morning, start with a simple stretching routine. Before you get out of bed, just sort of doing a couple minutes of stretching, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It just starts your circulation moving. It helps your digestive system start going and you'll function better throughout the day. You'll have more balance throughout the day as well. Another thing you can do is welcome the sun. The sunlight will help your internal clock sort of get your day started. If you can, within the first few hours of your day, as soon as the sun sort of rises, about five to 10 minutes, if you could just kind of let the sun just sort of hit your face, even if it's through a window, but if you can get outside, that'd be great. Just feel the warmth, feel the sun. That actually starts um, your mental kind of happy hormones, we call them. It helps, it helps them get like going and gives you a better, you know, start to your day helps your, even if it's in the middle of the day, if you're just kind of getting one, you know, cloudy, yucky day and the sun comes out, I would say go out and do that as well. Also eating a healthy breakfast. We always say, you know, it's the most important meal of the day. And if you break down the words break and fast, you're actually breaking your fast from the slumber. So you've been fasting all night as you've been sleeping. So it's important to make sure what you're coming off of the fast is a healthy option for your body um, so that you can get positive, good things going throughout the day. And that fuel that you're ingesting, that food that we're having is your fuel. This is our vehicle. Okay. So if you were to take your car and put the wrong fuel in the car, it wouldn't run properly. So the same thing happens with our bodies. If we're putting in, I mean, we're a little bit more forgiving where we can have a bad day, but if you're putting the wrong fuel consistently in your body, you feel that, you know, the phrase you are what you eat. So if you feel at junky, you probably ate too much junk food, kind of like that. So it's important to eat those healthier options and you'll feel healthier in the long run as well. Somebody mentioned earlier um, drinking more water. So I always bring this up, especially in my winter months, because it is easier to drink water in, in the spring and the summer when we're kind of warmer mm -hmm. outside. But one of the things we want to help our health, health out with is staying hydrated. So hydration not only is just to quench your thirst, okay? So yes, you're thirsty. But if you're thirsty, if you're like, oh, I'm so thirsty, I need something to drink, you're probably already partly dehydrated at that point. So it's important to make sure you're taking sips throughout the day. It could be decaf tea decaf coffee it could be like unflavored or it could be flavored seltzers but unsweetened seltzers things like that those all count as water and hydration but it's important to make note that this also helps your body systems as well that it gives cushion to organs it helps the systems respiratory digestive you know circulatory systems all work properly and they all kind of work in conjunction with each other so it's important to note that like you have to make sure that if one is kind of feeling off you help it by the other ones sort of getting back you know in check so staying hydrated have you ever had that kind of like groggy sort of headachey feeling not really a headache but kind of like you can't focus and you sort of, that all could be from a dehydration so it's important to make sure we're staying hydrated to increase your focus help your mood and also will help again improve the quality of sleep so another thing that we like to do is move more um, keeping your body healthy is not just about a strenuous workout routine. It could be a simple walk. It could be sitting in your chair, doing arm exercises and leg exercises and just moving the stiff muscles that we have. About every 45 to 60 minutes each day, if you've been sitting for that long, you should try to get up and move, walk, stretch your muscles for anywhere from three to five minutes. This will help increase your blood flow and improve energy levels. 
So I would challenge you to try a new activity, whatever it might be. It might be something that you love kayaking and you've never tried it, you know, to do it on a consistent basis. Maybe every weekend you want to go kayaking or it's just simply, like I said, getting out and walking, maybe just stretching, doing what I just said. Every hour you find that you sit a lot and it doesn't have to be that you're walking around, you know, outside taking a walk, but it could just be in place that you stand up from your computer and you sort of do some activities that are allowing you to, you know, move the muscles that might be, I tend to hold a lot of tension in my shoulders. And especially if I'm at the computer like this, um, you know, so I tend to have to really do some stretching in my back and things like that, but it doesn't have to be going away from where you are. If you're on a conference call or you're on a zoom like this, you could be standing right now. I don't know. I can't see you, but you know, it, and that would be fine because honestly it would be encouraging that sort of movement and that health aspect for you. So being active every day will actually decrease your risk for heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and even some cancers. So this potentially in the long run can help you live longer. So positivity, again, everything is possible, right? Anything is possible. Everything is possible. So some positive intentions each day. Do something that makes you happy each day. Try to be simple and realistic um, and learn to appreciate the moment that it brings you joy. So moment that you are enjoying your happiness, enjoying whatever it is that made you kind of smile that day brings that warmth to your heart. But avoiding that negativity, as I mentioned before, avoiding negative people, situations. Now there's things we can't avoid. Of course we can't. There's stress in our lives we can't avoid. There's good stress and there's bad stress, but it's all stress regardless. And our body reacts to that stress. So for instance, I say um, a nightmare. Okay, so I'm sure we've all had a nightmare at some point where we woke up kind of scared or, you know, your heart is racing, you might be in a sweat, you might have been like screaming in your sleep, because your body reacted to whatever that nightmare was. Was it real? No, it was it was fake. It was a nightmare. It felt very real. Your body reacted to it. So in many ways, it was real. However, the better health you're in, the better you are to handle things on a normal basis, the quicker your body comes back to normal. So being able to bring your heart rate back to normal, being able to sort of calm yourself down, you know, wipe off the sweat, all that, your body will recover faster from that stress. It could be stress at work. It could be stress with the family. It could be some other stress. Even if it's a happy stress, you know, somebody's getting married and there's so many things to do and it's running around and so stressful. Oh my gosh, it's a very happy occasion. But that stress is also stress on our body. So by having a better way to handle it and cope with it is what will keep you happier in the long run. Also, don't surround yourself with negative people, but don't be the negative person yourself. Don't have negative self-talk. That just ruins your day. It ruins your moment. You don't want to have that in your life, right? So reframe your attitude. Find something encouraging, even if it was a negative event, even if it was something stressful. Find something. Um, I just said in one of the programs yesterday, even if it's the fact that tomorrow's a new day and I get to start over. Today was terrible, whatever it was, everything's terrible, terrible, terrible. What I'm going to be grateful for tonight when I go to sleep is that it's a new day tomorrow and I get to start over. And that could be the positivity that you you end your night with. Trust trying a few moments of meditation. Now, whatever that is to you, I like to do just simple breathing exercises. I'll inhale for four seconds, hold it for seven, and then exhale for eight. That sort of refocuses my mind. Um, I can't, it's sort of like at night when I can't sleep, if I wake up and I, I just can't find myself to go back to sleep, I do that a few times. Sort of like reminiscent of counting sheep because you're counting your breaths, you're counting the seconds, but you can't really think about all the other things that are going on in your mind at the same time because you're counting. So, you know, it helps sort of reframe your attitude um, and gives you a moment to yourself, to help you relax and stay focused and positive about the next steps. You know, we always talk about three small meals, sweet, three square meals a day, sorry. But I also want to make note of our snacks. Snacks are important as well. About every three hours, our metabolism is about, a, you know, in the morning, we kind of start at, I say, like ground zero. And then it goes up as we eat. As we eat, we metabolize our food. As you stop eating and a, roughly three hours later, it comes back to zero. If you haven't eaten in three hours, it continues to go below that zero. So if you can eat about every three hours, it will keep your metabolism at zero or above, zero or above. Now, overeating, I'm not suggesting that. I'm saying we are trying to have a snack, meaning like an apple or some other like hummus and, you know, uh, carrot sticks or something like that. Just trying to have a healthier snack 
about two or three times a day, depending on, you know, what time you might start with breakfast, you might need a snack between breakfast and lunch, or if it's about, you know, you eat breakfast at nine, and you're eating lunch at 12, maybe you don't need a snack, but then you need one before dinner and maybe another snack before bed. Um, so things like that, I would never suggest even overeating before bed, because that can lead to some negative side effects as well. But having just a little something to kind of satisfy you, so you're not waking up with that kind of starving feeling in your belly rumbling in the middle of the night. So that's good as well. Maybe gra grabbing a handful of healthy nuts. These are full of omega-3s and help boost your brain and your immune health as well as reducing your risk for heart disease. And if you have a sweet tooth, you know what? Maybe make your own trail mix. Maybe make a healthy version of a trail mix, like a whole grain, you know, sort of, you know, oat cereal of some sort, throw in some walnuts, if you think about it, a walnut, if you've ever seen them, they look like a little brain, then you know they're healthy for your brain. So maybe some little chopped up walnuts, a dried fruit or something. And if you want that little sweetness, maybe some dark chocolate chips, like those little mini ones. So your your ratio is always going to be larger of the whole grain cereal versus the chocolate chip. But dark chocolate chips have antioxidants and have some health benefits for you as well. So again, everything in moderation, we're not looking to overdo it on any particular thing. We're just trying to keep nice balance. Ecotherapy, this is one of my favorites. I love ecotherapy. I love being outside and in the, in the great outdoors. This can help reduce your stress and improve your mental health as well. So if you're even having a stressful day, maybe you do wanna just get outside and take 10 minutes to yourself and just sort of refocus and let your mind just listen. Just listen to the air, listen to the birds, listen to, you know, we have a lot of cars that go by in the back, listening to the cars. It can be cathartic, it can be help reduce that stress. Taking about 10 to 30 minutes a day, if you can, to enjoy that beauty helps your mental health and your physical health. Maybe a walk, maybe just if you have a bike, you ride a bike, maybe taking the dog for a walk, whatever it is, whatever it is for you, it might be just sitting on a bench not doing anything, getting outside, getting the environment and your surroundings part of your day helps clear your mind and refocus and even helps reduce blood pressure and improve your mood. So make meal changes also. Just little manageable, small adjustments in your eating habits. Incorporating more fish and seafood into your meals. As Americans, generally, we don't eat enough um, seafood and fish. So it would be a great way to add it to some of your meals. You know, maybe it's taco night and you want to have fish tacos. Or maybe you're making pasta and you want to throw some seafood on top of that pasta. Whatever it might be, incorporating about eight ounces of seafood into your daily into your diet weekly would be a smart choice as well. You can always go to the local fishmonger and find what's on sale. It, sometimes it can be um, a little pricier, but just like our fruits and vegetables have a season, so do certain fishes. So different fishes kind of are more in season and can be cheaper during different times of the year. So if you ask that question, you'll find out which might be a better option. Even something like, you know, crab cakes or salmon cakes instead of a burger is a healthy twist on a new meal. And that way you can incorporate some different, you know, fish and seafood into your diet, making sure you're cooking it properly, obviously, and incorporating maybe different options and seeing what you might like best. Being mindful of your mental health, activities to improve your mental health. Make sure you try to give yourself time to meditate and relax, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and whatever that is to you, everybody meditates or relaxes a little differently. It might be reading a book. It might be taking a bath. It might be just kind of sitting outside, like I said, out and listening to the birds. Um, whatever it is, take a few moments to be calm, to just be, to just be yourself, listening to yourself breathe, paying attention to how you feel. And what you can do, like I said, that four, seven, eight breathing technique can help reduce some stress, help reduce if you find yourself breathing kind of rapidly, that breathing technique can help reduce that as well. Improving your health and your overall ability to handle stress as well. Maybe have a potluck dinner, maybe encourage family and friends and people to be creative, getting together, socializing, um, just enjoying time together. This will encourage maybe laughter and, and humor going on, maybe watching a funny movie, maybe telling and reminiscing about old stories that you know you forgot about for a while. These things are opportunities to give us a little lighthearted laughter and enjoying the moment, enjoying, and laughter can actually even be some sort of um, physical activity as well. I mean, we've all laughed hard enough where your stomach kind of hurts, your 
sort of out of breath, you have to catch your breath. It even helps decrease your blood pressure and helps increase those those uh, mental hormones like serotonin and dopamine and give you those happy hormones that laughter can bring on by making it a better day for you. So you've all heard the saying, you are what you'll eat. So here are a few little simple swaps that I just wanted to sort of make mention of. Something like a can of 100% pureed pumpkin, adding it to chili. I've even made, you know, like brownies and things like that with it. So again, you know, you can increase the nutritional benefits of a meal that whether it was already a healthy meal, you know, chili is not necessarily unhealthy. You throw in some ground turkey and do all your beans and all your other veggies, throw in a can of pumpkin. It's only going to taste like whatever spices you had already added um, to that chili. But this can really add a nice nutrient balance and beef up some of your fiber and things like that. Adding beans to your salad. Or maybe a side dish, or as I said, um, I've made pumpkin brownies, but I've even made black bean brownies where you just sort of mash up your beans and you can look up a recipe. It's simple, but it adds fiber and protein to your brownies. So it's still brownies. It's still a chocolate, you know, little delectable bite, but it adds some extra nutri nutrition there. I love roasting my vegetables. That's my new favorite way. Well, it's not so new to me anymore, but it was my new favorite way when I first started. Um, I love roasting all vegetables, whatever they may be, because it just is a different platform of flavor, a different variety. Sometimes it adds a crunch, you know, most of the time with, with um, roasting them, but oftentimes it will even help bring out the natural sugars that are in those fruits and vegetables. So they, they have a whole different um, taste profile as well. Um, so maybe even having fruit for dessert, one of the things we love to do around here is um, taking an apple and slicing it up and then um, sprinkling a little cinnamon on it and putting it in the microwave for a few seconds. It sort of mimics a little apple pie and gives you that satisfaction of being something sweet, but not being as unhealthy as, let's say, an apple pie. So healthy tips and um, habits that we can incorporate Maybe making sure your pantry is stocked with some healthy additions like brown rice, quinoa, canned tomatoes, low sodium broths, all these things just having on hand. That way, as you are starting a particular recipe or you're just sort of being creative that night with whatever it is, you have those things on hand. Um, a non-fat dried milk is wonderful to add to pancakes or soups or casseroles. All it really does is add calcium. It doesn't really taste like anything or do much to the dish. Um, eggs really are not just for breakfast. We tend to kind of think that. I think people are sort of understanding that eggs can be in a dinner casserole um, loaded with vegetables or a frittata or something like that. And if you are eating out, try to pick some of the healthier options like grilled options, roasted, broiled, and sauces that maybe are more broth or like a tomato-based sauce as opposed to like a creamy-based sauce. Those are healthier options. I said this a few times now, doing things with gratitude. Um, it's just going to be a good day. Start your day with that little stretch. It's going to be a good day. Start your day with a positive goal. Do one thing that you enjoy. Start maybe on your commute to the office or wherever you're going You know, out. You maybe start talking to a friend, taking a few minutes those during those times to just sort of feel better about the day and what's going on. Um, and then you could start with, with a positive aspect to what the day is going to bring. Focus on some simple stress relievers. As I mentioned, breathing techniques. You can watch the sunrise. You can watch the sunset. Um, maybe just taking that walk outside. Maybe just listening to your favorite music. Maybe reading a book. Maybe painting. Maybe whatever it is. Maybe you have a craft or a hobby that brings you kind of a sense of calm and helps you relax and trying to do that each day as well. At the end of the day, take a few min minutes to jot down just like three things you're grateful for. If you can't think of three, just try to think of one. Um, and like I said, it could be the fact that tomorrow is a new day and you get to start over. But keeping that gratitude journal is really great for your mental health as well. Just a few final thoughts before we move on to our questions. Eating mindfully and eating with good intentions will help affect your digestion and your overall health. Avoid stress whenever possible and try not to dwell on things you cannot change. Exercise is great for your mind, body, and your overall wellness. It's easy to get caught up in the chaos, but truly really try to find time for your own positivity and your own relaxation. 
making healthier choices for a healthier lifestyle is always just the way to go. And being forgiving, as I said, there's always going to be days and times where maybe that wasn't the best option or the best choices or just even available to you if you're out at someone else's house and you're like, oh, is there, this is all I got to choose from. You know, there's always ways to just kind of start anew the next day. And being and having an optimistic attitude. So being that that positive person and being optimistic towards other can, others can really be contagious. So we want to really sort of share the positivity and pay it forward. Adding that extra movement into your daily activity, whether it be a walk or chair exercises and just stretching and things like that, it's a really great way to keep your body healthy and your mental health sort of clear as well. So remember that your reward is waiting. It's just a simple few simple tricks that can keep you on the right track.